Hey guys, um, I thought I'd come on here and, and share something with you guys that's really encouraging. Um, it was a very short dream that I had last night, um, but let me explain to you what was going on in the dream. Uh, my husband and I were in the car, he was driving, I was in the passenger seat, and, um, and it was a day not unlike today. I mean, it was a, uh, a sunny day, and it was late in the afternoon. It looked like it was around maybe 5 o'clock in the afternoon, um, and it did look like it was around this time of year. It wasn't winter, it wasn't spring, um, just to look around at the trees and everything. It looked like late summer, early fall. So, like I said, and, you know, just like a day like today. Well, in either case, um, we were back at a um, an intersection, and we were stopped at the light. And I know this intersection very well because it's from the area that I grew up around because I live in Lexington, Kentucky, but I grew up um, on Lake Harrington or in that community um, in Garrett County is what they call it. And uh, um, right outside of town in a little town called Stanford that's next to Lancaster, Kentucky, there's an intersection to where um, I believe the road's called 150, the highway is. And at the very end of the highway, you're driving, say, from Danville, Kentucky. I always said I was from the Tri-City area because it's Danville, Stanford, and Lancaster. <laughs> but anyway, I digress, right? Um, but in either case, um, if you're at this stoplight, extremely, like, right back behind you is west. Straight in front of you is east. To the left is due north, like if you're going to Lexington. And then if you head south, uh, actually the sign next to uh, that intersection says Chattanooga 200 miles. So you'd be heading south, due south to uh, Tennessee. Um, in either case, we're sitting there at this same stoplight intersection. And I hadn't really been there since um, the last time I was there. There's a, a little hospital called Fort Logan Hospital. Uh, and I think now it's called Ephraim McDowell Fort Logan Hospital that's in Stanford, Kentucky. And my daughter um, had a, a bad case of mono when she was in high school. And um, she also had like, I think it was strep throat or something like that at the same time. It was like it was hitting her right and left. She was sick for two or three months, really bad. And I was taking her to the ER there um, around that time of day too. It was late afternoon. And um, that was the last time I was there. And um, Carmen, my daughter, is going to be 20. Um, in October and so this was when she was 16 so it was 10 years ago so it's been a long time since I was at that intersection but in either case um, that's where I was and we were stopped at the light well all of a sudden you know being a passenger you know we were just I guess listening to the radio and just you know not talking at the moment which is hey you don't get too much quiet time around me in case y'all haven't figured that out but anyway uh I, I was looking straight forward and in the clouds something caught my eye it was glistening really a bright shine like like a diamond it was like shining that bright and i saw it behind the cloud and i thought hold on just a second you know i thought that that's you know th there's no way that the sun could be you know like um you know coming up right now it's supposed to be going down but it looked that bright and uh or brighter actually it was more like that really crystal um diamond shine look well all of a sudden it starts coming out of the clouds and it's bursts of glory guys i mean it was absolutely the most beautiful thing i've ever seen in my life and uh and it, it i've never seen the sun look this way i've never even on the best uh, uh say grouping of clouds with the sun bursting through it i've never seen anything look like this it was that beautiful and i looked over at alex and when it wasn't just a little twinkle or flash or shine and that glory started coming through that can only mean one thing i looked over to him i said alex it's the rapture and i said it three times i said it's the rapture it's the rapture it's the rapture and like and i was like let's ask him one more time you know like you know because i don't know i mean this was my dream so i can't really control like how i would but i probably would like in in uh, real life too i would say oh jesus count me worthy you know like let me go with you you know i probably would repent one last time of uh um at, but I couldn't keep my eyes off the sky, guys. It was that exciting. And wouldn't you know, 
uh, I've only heard one other person ever say that when he came out of the clouds and it, that it looked like he was almost doing like he was swimming instead of uh, coming out of the clouds like walking. He wasn't walking with the way I saw him in my dream. Um, have you ever seen somebody in a pool like where their uh, where their arms are outstretched like he was on the cross really and he was he was coming uh, in out of the cloud like that and then he just turned around and flipped around guys it was the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life and he was so big and so shine with glory and so beautiful guys it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life and um, and this is going to happen so soon, guys. It was so, so beautiful. I, and, and guys, this is the thing. These kind of things are, are that are spiritually discerned, the feelings that we have, there aren't words in the English language or any language as far as I'm concerned that can really describe it because it is a, partly spiritually discerned, not just what we're looking at with our carnal eyes or hearing with our carnal ears or anything like that. Um, so... Uh, that's the best I can articulate it. And I'm sorry if I wax a bit inarticulate other than to say, oh, guys, it was beautiful. But, guys, if you can only imagine, it looked like he just swam out. Of, like it was water or something. Uh, like the clouds were water to him. I mean, guys, it's going to be great. Guys, for anybody out there that's not called on the name of Jesus and repented of their sins and said they're sorry and asked him to forgive them and, and to, to come and be indwelled with the Holy Spirit, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Guys, you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. This is, the, this is going to be the last messages, really, that, that the watchmen are going to uh, be able to give. I mean, with all of the dreams that, that believers are having, guys, this is not going to be something that tarries for another five, six, seven years. That's not going to happen. And most of us that are rapture-centric, per se, um, we believe, you know, with, with all of our heart, just about everybody that I know that is anticipating the rapture any day now is saying that this is our year. And and whether you believe that because of, um, say, some of the great signs that have shown up in the heavens or for whatever reason that you believe it, um, I've, I've never been um, told to, to look for a, a sign, really, even though I see that that is the Revelation 12 sign. It's just in my heart. It's in my soul. I know these things, guys. Let's face it, we we walk by faith. We don't really have to see a sign to know that that is the time. But you know, the the Bible does say, and the Apostle Paul says that that day should not take us unawares. Um, it almost makes it sound like um, that we should know not only the day, but almost down to you know the exact time that he that he would show up. And so, if Guys, we are to encourage each other with these words as we see the day approaching. Well, guess what? I see the day approaching. And um, and, and I know many of you guys do too here in the body of Christ. And guys, we're going to be forever family. And I'll tell you a beautiful story too. And this uh, doesn't... Uh, um, uh, I know a lot of you can probably relate to it. And, and it's kind of hard to explain this too because some of it is spirit, spiritually discerned. But for those of you with eyes to see and ears to hear, just listen to what happened this morning. As many of you guys might know, Janice Vodka is a... Um, uh, a, a woman that comments a lot on a lot of our Christian channels. She's a beautiful sister in the Lord. She is not, uh, she doesn't have her channel, but she is always the most positive person. And Janice Wodka, it's W-O-D-K-A, and I hope I'm not saying her last name wrong, because I'm always like, Janice, 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 and it's not like I say her last name a lot or anything like that. But, um, and, and Char Kempler, from uh, her channel over in England. She lives in the UK. Um, Char and Janice and I talk rather often on the phone. And um, and also, you know, like, do, like, 
chats, you know, on Facebook and things like that, just to have an open fellowship. Um, because uh, we were all three uh, basically came out of the church, and and uh, I seldom attend church myself. Um, Char is having a problem finding a church at the U in the UK, and uh, Janice does attend a church that she's rather fond of um, up in the Chicago area where she's from. So all of that's fine and well. Uh, I think it's great if you can still find a church that you can attend. But um, it's been harder for me here where I am now. And uh, I guess it's because um, the gospel was so readily available. You you take it for granted. You think it's going to be that way all your life. But in either case, to make a long story short I, short, I guess I said all that to say this. We were on the phone this morning and I felt compelled to read a couple of Psalms. And uh, just to uplift us, we read Psalm 51 and 55. And when I got to the part where it said Selah, um, I said, hey guys, I said, do you know what that actually means? Um, I said, I found a need to research it because um, as you all may know that have been following my channel, I've written several psalms uh, or love poetry as I call them to the Lord myself for praise um, and worship of Him. And um, uh, I may repost some of those if you guys would like to see them, just let me know. Um, but in either case, I wrote about 14 or 15 psalms and I got to looking at the at Selah and I thought, what does that really mean? Because it would be in the middle of the psalm sometimes. It wasn't always at the end. And I thought, does it mean amen? Does it mean, you know, praise the Lord? Does it mean like shalom kind of? Or is it an older, more ancient Hebrew way of saying that? Um, but what it, it said when I looked it up that the Hebrew meaning of selah is... Um, it's a pause. It's a reflection so that you can reflect on what was just said. Or it could be that you're changing thoughts. So reflect on these things. And now we're going to go on with something else. Kind of like chapter one, chapter two. Um, but it was like a pause. And uh, in a song or poetry praise. Um, or uh, poetry prose, if you will. So in either case, um, I explained all of that. You know, kind of um, like my long-winded self will do sometimes. And um, got off. Off the phone with them we had a great conversation and it's not that we don't always read scripture on the phone sometimes we'll just you know talk about the kids or the, the weather what's going on you know in our uh you know maybe a dream we had something to encourage each other in the lord but we don't always um read scripture over the phone but we did this morning well i got off the phone and i was checking through my emails and i saw sister uh cinderella who comments on a lot of christian channels as well and she's always been a good buddy of mine and janice Janice's. Um, and so I thought, wow, you know, she doesn't talk to me every day. So I thought, wow, I really want to see what she has to say to me. Because it's usually something like, you know, that maybe somebody needs a prayer request or something like that. And we had not talked in a couple of months as far as texting goes, even though she usually will comment on my videos. Or if I see her comment on someone else's, I'm trolling after her and making a comment on her. Well, I opened this up and it said, Kim, I was reading Psalms today and I got, for whatever reason, I felt like I was led in the spirit to research what Selah meant. And she went through the whole explanation with me that, you know, the Hebrew meaning of it is to pause or to reflect on what was just said uh, a lot of times in, in prose um, or in poetry or as in a psalm or a song. Um, and that's why David used it so much. Well, for crying out loud, she said, and I tell you something else, too, for whatever reason, I felt led, and I hadn't heard from her in a couple of months on a, on a text or an email. She said, I felt led to tell you, Holy Spirit said, hey, tell Kim. Seriously, guys. Right. So, you know what that means to me and what that meant to her and Janice and all of us? It means... Wherever two or more are gathered in his name, that's a church too. Because wherever two or more are gathered in his name, it's a promise of his that he's there among us. He's listening to every word we say. It, it, he's hanging on our words too. He loves the praise and worship that comes out of just a few of us getting together on a chat or a, or a phone or these live uh uh, feeds that you can do now on YouTube. I've thought about doing them. If you guys would like to, just let me know. But anything that we can do to fellowship, can you ever get enough of Jesus, guys? Come on. Um, so, and with other Holy Spirit-filled believers, that we're going to be forever family, guys. So, 
I don't know about you, but I'm so blessed. Bless my soul is all I can say. That that was so encouraging to me. Not only the, the very short dream, but also um, a confirmation from the Holy Spirit today through another believer um, uh, of what we were just talking about. Hey, tell Kim. And, and he is like that. He is like that with the, with so many believers that we have um, a relationship with him that he is our Lord. But he's also um, our friend. And he's also um, the best thing that ever happened in your life, guys. So please accept the Lord Jesus, guys. And, um, and the rest of you guys that are in the body of Christ, if I don't see you back here, I'll see you in the air.